In this video, I want to demonstrate how to set up a standalone elastic agent. I should also say that this isn't something that's normally done. Most people would use a fleet server to manage their agents. But I think it's good to know the basics of how to set up a standalone elastic agent because it can help you evaluate specific types of elastic integrations without too much setup. And later, when we talk about fleet servers again, you'll understand what's actually happening behind the scenes, which can save you a lot of time when troubleshooting unexpected behaviors. Before I go further, let me define an elastic agent. An elastic agent is a service that you can put on any server so that it can easily ingest local metrics and logs and relay them elsewhere. As you probably know, we already have the Beats library to do this, but where the elastic agents differ are that they offer you more control to customize how you ingest and deliver data. For this tutorial, you will need a few things. First, you'll need a running instance of Elasticsearch and Kibana. I will leave a link in the description of this video on how to set that up. You will also need an instance of Ubuntu 20.04 because we will install an Elastic Agent to it. You can optionally have one more Ubuntu instance if you want to do some testing with Logstash. Along the way, if you find this video helpful, then give it a like. If you have any questions, then leave a comment below or you can contact us through our website for help. So let's begin. This is my new instance of Elastic and Kibana. I'll leave a link in the description of this video to a different video with step-by-step -step instructions on how to set up Elastic and Kibana. And here I have a new instance of Ubuntu 20.04 on my local network. Uh, first, let me update the distribution and install the things I usually need. So let me go apt get install hyphen y vim curl new bg and gpg. And I'll pause until this is done. All right, things are done. So I'm going to download the Elastic Agent to this machine so that it can monitor the processes, activities, and logs on this machine. And this page here is where you can download the Elastic Agent. And I'll just pick the Linux one. I'll copy the link. And then I'll just curl hyphen L hyphen O package name. And there we go. So let's unzip all this stuff. Tar XVFZ. All right, so everything we need should be inside this Elastic Agent directory. To start up the Elastic Agent, the first thing you'll need to do is edit the elastic-agent.yaml configuration file. So let me open this up. If you just want to consume default metrics and logs from your system, then you can manually edit a few details in this file. But for the more advanced use cases like consuming specific metrics and logs from software such as Apache, Nginx, RabbitMQ, and a whole bunch of others, it will be too difficult to make this Elastic Agent YAML file manually. So for the more advanced use cases, it is better to log into Kibana and use the integrations feature to automatically generate the agent policy and Elastic Agent YAML file that you need. I'll show you how to do this a bit later in the video because those configurations can get pretty complex. For now, I'll manually edit this Elastic Agent YAML file so that I can demonstrate a few basic things. So the first section is the outputs. And when you use Elastic Agents in a standalone way, there's only two outputs available to you. Either you can output to an Elasticsearch instance or you can output to Logstash. There's really no other types of outputs. And in this next section is the input section where you specify the type of data that you want to collect. And you can see here some of the default metrics are around uh, system resources. And now for these other sections, I don't have as much experience speaking to them. Uh, some of them look like they're pretty self-explanatory in terms of, let's see, like configuring where to download some packages, or maybe for certain things, it's about where the Elastic Agent should write air logs to. Uh, but honestly, for me, a lot of this thing is beyond me. And in fact, even if I go to 
uh, the Elastic documentation. So let me find that. All right, so this here, there's an, uh, there's an Elastic Agent reference.yaml file. In fact, it's even on the server here. Let's go right over here. And if I come back to documentation, here they do list all the, uh, um, all the available properties for you to modify, but they don't really go into detail explaining any of it beyond just the comments that you already see in there. And also for a lot of these other configurations, I would just rely on Kibana's integration to automatically generate a lot of these details for me anyway. So let's not worry about all the complex configurations at this point. We'll do that later in the video. For now, let's just do a very simple use case and throw whatever basic metric data we have into Elasticsearch. So I'm going to go back to the top and I'll put in my connection details for the Elasticsearch server. So HTTPS, Elastic, Evermite, Net, 9200. And we should use an API key, but uh, just to keep things quick and simple, I'll not use it. I'll just use the Elastic Super User that I already have. A, B, C, D, one, two, three, four. And I think that should be it. We can now install the Elastic Agent and run it with Elastic Agent install. Yes, no to the fleet server. And that took about a minute and I think we should be okay now. So now let me go back to Kibana and I'm going to click on the menu and go to stack management because I want to take a look at some data and I'll click to the index management and click to data streams. And we're going to see that this page used to be empty, but now it actually has the data streams that are coming from our elastic agent. And we can verify that new content is coming in here by going to Dev Tools. And let's actually take a search, or look, let's actually search in one of the data streams. So get metric hyphen uh, ge uh, generic default underscore search. And there we have it. So you can see all the most recent data that our Elastic Agent is giving us. And this is the most basic setup with Elastic Agent streaming data to Elasticsearch. Let's try another setup. Let's have Elastic Agent stream data to Logstash. So if I open up my YAML file again, it means that I would just edit the output connection here to point to Logstash with uh, something like this. And then we would need an instance of Logstash that uses this configuration pipeline. And I have a new instance of Ubuntu 20.04 over here in this window. And I'll make this my Logstash server. I could have put Logstash on the same server as the Elastic Agent, but I thought I'd put on a different server this time just because I might want to use this Logstash server for something else later on anyway. Now this is a new instance of Ubuntu, so I'm just going to update the distribution and install some of the packages I might need, like the uh, vim, curl, newpg, gpg, and I'll let this thing run. Okay, the update is done. So now let's actually install Logstash onto this server. And here's the documentation for installing Logstash. Just copy these three commands and uh, oh, four commands and this fourth command into terminal window. So we'll just do that right now. Get the public signing key and I will paste in here. Install a dependency. Let's update the repository definitions. And finally, install Logstash. And there we go, Logstash is installed. 
So all we need to do now is start a log stash configuration pipeline. So I'll make this file here and then I'll go back to documentation and I'm just going to use this configuration pipeline. Keep it nice and simple. Just paste in here. So we're going to ingest from the Elastic Agent. So this server is going to listen on port 5044. And for the output, let's keep it even more simple. I'll just dump the results to standard out. And I think we should be ready to start log stash. Oh, wait, before we start, uh, I want to figure out what my IP address is. So my IP address is 192.168.0.48. And the reason I want to know this is because later Elastic Agent needs to direct traffic to this IP address. All right, let's start things up. USR share log stash bin log stash hyphen F log stash dot cough. And I'll wait until this is finally loaded up. Oh, looks like there's an issue. Oh, okay, I just have to type the full path to the configuration file. So I'll wait for a moment. All right, looks like everything is started up and Logstash is listening on port 5044. So now let's edit our Elastic Agent to point to Logstash. So type Logstash. And then let's place in the IP address of our Logstash server, 192.168.048, port 5044. All right, now we should be ready to restart the Elastic Agent. But because I rarely use Elastic Agents in a standalone way, I don't actually know how to reload a configuration file. So I'm going to cheat. I'm just going to uninstall this agent, then reinstall it again, and that will force the Elastic Agent to respect the new changes from my YAML file. So I'll do Elastic Agent uninstall. Oh, they just want us to run it from the actual USR bin directory. So USR bin Elastic Agent uninstall. Yes. There we go. And now let's install the agent. Yes. No to the fleet server. Okay, it was about a minute or so. So let's inspect the Elastic Agent. We can see here that Elastic Agent is now directing to our Logstash server, which means in a moment, our Logstash server should start receiving data. Oh, I saw some flickering in the background. Great. So what we're seeing is that the Elastic Agent is directing all data stream straight to the Logstash server and not going to the Elastic server anymore. So this gives me an idea. I just want to try something really quick. Elastic Agent is currently throwing data to Logstash, but now I want Logstash to relay that information to Elasticsearch and put it in an index. So let's just quickly try that out. I'm going to stop my Logstash instance. And then let's open up the configuration file and I'll paste in my Elasticsearch connection details like that. And Logstash will automatically create this new index, LS logs, because I've defined it here. And let's just start Logstash. Okay, it looks like standard out is printing the details here. But we should also check in Kibana whether it's showing up here. So I'm just gonna get ls logs forward slash count, uh, underscore count. Yep, we're seeing 1000 records. Uh, and yeah, so, and so the count is going up. So that's a good sign. Let's do a search. And here you can see that the Elastic Agent is giving data to Logstash and Logstash is dumping it all into this new index here. Next, I want to talk about Elastic Integrations. I mentioned earlier that I rarely create the Elastic Agent YAML file by hand, and there's plenty of reasons for that. I'll give one example. Imagine I had an Apache web server hosting a website. And let's say I want an Elastic Agent on the same server. 
to ingest logs and metrics specific to the Apache service. It would be very time consuming for me to fill out the Elastic Agent YAML file by hand, especially if I'm not an expert with Apache. This is where the Elastic integrations come in. The Elastic Stack version 8 has a bunch of integrations for various software and services. When you install one of these integrations, it will automatically create or update an agent policy, which in turn can automatically create Elastic Agent YAML files for you. Then you can just upload the Elastic Agent YAML files to your Elastic Agent server, or in our case, the Apache server. In future videos, I will probably revisit fleet servers because fleet servers can manage all your Elastic Agents so that you don't have to manually update YAML files on all your Elastic Agents anytime there are integration updates. But for now, we'll do things manually. The other thing about integrations is that sometimes they come with boiler template visualizations that you can put on your dashboards. So that way you don't have to manually create your own visualizations. I thought of a demonstration that I think would be helpful. Let's install Apache onto one of our Ubuntu servers so that we can host the web page. Then let's use an Apache integration with Elastic to create a new Elastic Agent YAML file that will instruct our Elastic Agents on how to consume Apache specific data. So let's try this out. So I'll just stop this Logstash server and let's put Apache on this server. So if we're going to put on the server, let's just uninstall this Elastic Agent. Oh, let me try this again. I will uninstall from the USR binary directory. Yes. Yeah, I'm uninstalling because I'm going to need a new Elastic Agent YAML file here anyway. And now let's install Apache. App get install hyphen Y Apache 2. All right, the Apache web server is installed. So let's figure out what the IP address of our web host is. It's 192.168.047. So I'll just paste it into my browser here. Dot four seven. Great. So the web page is actually loading up. So Apache is all up and running. So let's go back to the integrations area. I'll just scroll down. And once this loads, so give it a moment. There we go. Let's look for the Apache integration. All right, and I'll just press add Apache HTTP server. All right, so there are some configurations that you can choose to do, but I'll just leave it as is because this integration already knows what, uh, where all the default log files and everything is. And actually, let me just scroll up again to double check. Yeah, these are all the default Apache stuff. So this integration already knows about it. So I'll press save and this will create a new agent policy, which might take a moment. But once the policy is created behind the scenes, this integration will also generate, um, it'll generate the Elastic Agent YAML file for us, which we can download. Oh, let's see. Um, yes, add Elastic Agent to your host. Right, and here it is. So click on standalone or run as standalone and you will see that. This right here is our Elastic Agent YAML file. So I just copied it to my clipboard. These instructions here are just to download the Elastic Agent source files, which we already have on our server. So I'll just skip that. I'm going to make a backup of my old Elastic Agent YAML file. And now I'll make a new one. And I'll just paste from my clipboard. And here it is. So the only thing I really need to change here is my connection to Elastic. So let me just put in the correct URL and my credentials. That should be it. But just for fun, we'll take a look at the rest of this file because all this was auto-generated and they're really, it would be kind of unrealistic for me to have handcrafted 
all these settings because it is quite a bit. All right, so that's why very rarely will I handcraft my own Elastic Agent YAML file. I just let the integrations do it for me. So let's go ahead and um, install this Elastic Agent. Whoops, I mean uh, install. And yes, uh, notes the fleet server, and we'll give it a moment. So as soon as this Elastic Agent starts up, it will basically use all the new settings from our latest Elastic Agent YAML file. Okay, looks like it's up. So let's actually take a look at the default visualizations that come with this integration. So I'll open up this link and I'll open up this link. And let's go to our web page. I'm gonna hit reload a few times just to make sure there's some data. And great, looks like some of the metrics are coming through. All right, yeah, looks like this one is doing okay as well. Let's press reload a few times. Nothing's showing up on the map. It might be because of some firewalls in my office network, but that's okay. The other thing we can double check is index management. That's um, right here. And if you click on data streams, now you can see data streams specific to Apache. And that's all I want to cover for now on standalone Elastic Agents. If you seriously want to do more with standalone Elastic Agents, it would be a good idea to read through the documentation on the Elasticsearch website. As you can see here on the left, there's quite a few reading sections for you to go through. It would also be helpful to know where to find error logs for the Elastic Agents. So if I click here, these are some of the typical places you can go to find the logs for Elastic Agents. And naturally, it would differ depending on which operating system you're using. So that's it for now. If you have any questions, then just leave a comment or you can contact us through our website. And if you found this video helpful, then give us a like. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can stay on top of videos as we release them. So we'll see you in the next video.